in this time of empty storefronts, how handy, not to mention tasty, would it be to find a cornucopia of dining options under one roof? Pretty tasty indeed, says our Faith Saley. Once upon a time, Americans actually left their houses to shop. But with the rise of online shopping, thousands of brick and mortar retail stores have closed. It's being called a retail apocalypse. Store after store shutting down. Find and some right. developers are hoping to fill that empty space by filling eager bellies. This is a food hall. Even if you've been here 10 times, you walk in and you're discovering something different. Phil Colicchio is a consultant with the real estate firm Cushman in Wakefield. So how is a food hall different than a food court that we'd find in a mall or an airport? Food court was never really designed to give you an experience of any kind. It wasn't designed to make you say, wow. In a food hall, all your senses should get activated. Lots of variety, lots of artisanality. Uh, what is artisanality? That's, is it, that mean fancy? What does no, that mean? No, you know what? It means not corporate. They may not be corporate, but food halls are big business. In 2015, there were just 70 food halls in the U.S. By the end of next year, there will be more than 400. Detroit has a food hall built out of old shipping containers. In Anaheim, there's one inside a former citrus packing plant. Chicago already has 10 food halls with more on the way. For us, this wasn't a space filler. This was intended to be a traffic generator. Nebraska real estate developer Jay Noddle. His inner rail food hall is part of a complex on the site of a former racetrack. And these are great. He turned to New York chef Akhtar Nawab to help curate the space. Omaha's Inner Rail Food Hall opened last month. The destination here is food, right? The destination is not to go shopping. People are coming here specifically because they want food, they want an experience. Nawab scoured Omaha, looking for the best food the city had to offer, which is how he found 24-year-old Chloe Tran. She was anxious to expand, but didn't think she had the money to open a second location of her Vietnamese sandwich shop. Brick and mortar shop would cost like at least five to 10 times more just to get it started. Vietnam isn't the only far off land whose cuisine is represented. In fact, culinary diversity is part of what makes each food hall unique. Sagar Gurung serves up Himalayan dumplings called momos. Is the first one ready? Gurum was born in Nepal, but grew up in Nebraska. Back then, his neighbors used to complain constantly about the smell of his family's cooking. And, you know, fast forward 20 plus years now, I, I, I see people lining up to pay for the same foods. Here you are. Thank you. This is Omaha, and there are dumplings from the Himalayas. Isn't that great? Now there's a place where you can interact with people that you've never met before and try cuisines from around the world. A, a kimchi mac and cheese egg roll. Hello Korea, right? Korea meets America, right? Even if all these dishes are Instagram worthy, Phil Colicchio says a good food hall should give you something technology can't, a sense of community. Since the cave people we ate together. And that's probably not gonna change even in an e-commerce dominated world.